All right, let's go. This is Cape IT Unit 2, May, June 2022. All right, so this is the 2022 paper. And I'm going to go through it. Let's see how that's all the questions go. I can't remember going through this paper in advance, so I might have to, you know, bring it through some of the answers. I don't have the official answer sheets for this or anything, so how oh, it works out, it works out. A database is used by an international clothing retail chain with outlets in many Caribbean islands suggests how senior management can use this database when making decisions. All right. First question is usually database. Um, suggests how they can use this database when making decisions about products in relation to the following location of products. A database is used. Database is used. Location of products. Three marks. Okay, so it's basically straightforward. The warehouse, yeah, the outlets can be put in as a field and that field updated regularly to show the location. I think they wanted to say the word field. Basically, so that'll be the first one. Access to products. Um, a yes slash no field can be put in to show if a product is accessible or not. I guess so. Uh, yeah, this is testing like normal database query and data to determine trends for information needs. A query can be run to show the most sold item or items out of stock. All right, to, apl to apply it to the scenario, you're basically using all the database knowledge to try to map it back to what they have there. Something like that, I guess. I can't think of it being any more complicated than that because if it gets more complicated than that, then it would be more than three marks. All right, part B, the customer service representatives at one of the clothing retail store outlets maintain a database of customers and their orders. Table one is an extract. <laughs> okay, cool. This is the table, so I'll customer numbers, name, address, quantity, unit price, yada, yeah, yeah, yeah. yada. Recommendation, new for your database, you normalize that. Identify two features of the table and one that justify this recommendation. So you have to justify why it needs to be normalized. Um, normalization is basically trying to make the table more modular. Um, the relationships will be a lot um, easier to manage. So let's see, do we have any repeated fields? Do we have any repetition, my? Um, customer number, oh yeah, customer number is repeated. Yeah, 111, 112, 112. So you have repeated, um, repeated records for customer 111 and 112. So that's one thing that's definitely a problem. And then what else do we have? We have, um, we have customer information and order information in the same table. Plus we have repeated, um, shirt, pants, belt, dress, swimsuit, jacket. All right, you have um, two groups of data in the same table, which is customer information and order information. So it would be wise to normalize that and split those up so that you, your orders and your customers would be two different, which is why the customer number is repeated. Let me see if there's anything else that I could find. Quantities, address. Yeah, basically the customer information is repeated for sure. You know, the information should be there also. Okay, cool. That's two marks, yeah. Those two things should be should be enough to get two marks. Should the result in tables in the database if they were to be normalized to second normal form? I am very concerned that they give you so much space here to draw a normalized table. Like I usually write it in standard form, but if they want me to if you want to actually like draw out the actual table, that's real that's real cringe. Cringy because like it'll take so long to draw the table. So I just go and write it out in standard standard notation, right? So if we were to fix this in standard notation, we would have a table called customers. I need to get space to do it. Okay, I'll write it on top and I'll just copy it to the bottom. So you'll have a customers table. The customers table have customer number. 
that was a long word to put and you all put it customer number will be the primary key so we underline that then you have first name you have last name and you have address and then in the next table you'll have the orders table which will have order number then product quantity and unit price and you have to have something you need to have something to relate it so we'll put customer number here one time All right that way when you normalize it there will be a relationship between the two tables I... yeah what is it to normalize it so what second normal form yeah so second normal form that should work because everything relates to the primary key in some way so the customer number first name last name the orders table could split a little more because you could you could um split the product id um the products and the price and you could just have the order number linked to the customer number so that'll take it to normal form but they didn't ask for the normal form they just asked for second so we'll just take that second and go how this will get 10 marks i'm not entirely sure like why they have so much marks i gather that they want you to draw it out but i don't know if you have time in the exam draw the table but as far as i know you're supposed to not have a problem if you put it in standard notation because a lot of the time the question asks for standard notation and the hard part is they said show the result in table so i don't know if they want you to draw the table because they gave you a lot of space but hmm. i'll leave it at that that is second normal form there hopefully all right cool all right so that's question number one let's go on to question number two um after the database question they usually ask you an ERD question or a dfd question no need to looks like they have a dfd question here a health testing facility um at a health testing facility large volumes of data are stored retrieved and transmitted daily in relation to patients test results and other aspects of the testing facility cool the system at the test testing facility operates as follows each patient has an id number cool the id number date name tests on each patient is stored in a database cool and this enters the patient id so they kind of run in here through the things that the data flow diagram has and um the reason they were through it is so that you'll be able to get a clue as to what you need to have so total is the by patient and calculated the customer pays detailed information all right so let me see if i can pick out the um, external entities we have a customer we have a a nurse Yeah, that's all we have there for that. Do we have a... Oh, mm, we have a database that stores all the information. Mm, that's not good. Right, we have a database. Yeah, right, so we have the database that is um, storing all the information. Um, wait, they have customer and patient. I've seen like there's a patient up here, each patient with an ID number. Mm. The customer is the patient, I guess. Yeah, looks so to me. All right, so let's see if I could um, go through this data flow diagram. So we're trying to figure out the basic thing, the basic things that we have. The first thing that I'll want to do is I'll want to find the first external entity which is the NIST. The NIST enters the ID number, name, type and test date uh, and the cost of the test. So we start off with the NIST. NIST is external entity. The NIST is going to send in a lot of stuff into a process. NIST enters ID number, name, type of test date and cost 
All right, they're gonna they're gonna send this into some process, and we're going to the new process. What? Total to be paid by the patient is calculated. So it says calculate total. We we'll call this process zero one, right? Um. The data on each patient is stored in an interviews. Test result, okay, calculate total. All right, let me see this again. Let me think about this again. A health testing facility, that one is a data stored, retrieved and transmitted daily. System at the health facility operates as follows. Each patient has an ID number. Data in each patient is stored in a database. The nurse enters the patient ID name, type of test, date, and cost. Where do you nurse get any data from the database? So the database is here. Patient data. The nurse is going to have to retrieve data. So it will pull from the database the information. And that information is going to go to the nurse. So we'll call this patient info. Hopefully. All right, we call our patient info and the patient info will still go to the nurse. The nurse will send all that information to calculate the total. How do they know the um Calculate the total, you send the total to the customer, which is the customer. The customer pays for the test taken, sends payment. So the customer pays for the test. Um, and it will generate an email. When it generates the email, it will send back the email to the person. I guess. All right, so let's see if we represented everything in the system. Sometimes these data flow diagram questions, they are sort of, um, What's the word by? They're a little heavy, and we do always understand what they want. But I think I think we have what they want here. I think so. So there's a database that has all the patient data. We represented that. All of that information is going to a get data function. The get data is going to get all the data. Um, and well, the nurse is going to get all the data. When the nurse gets all the data. It's any ID type of test or last up to uh, right. So they send all the data to the nurse, the nurse sends it to the calculate total. It's calculated and it's sent to the customer, which is the patient. Customer pays for the test taken. They send the payment and then they generate the email and the email is generated and goes back to the customer. Six marks. Whoa. I guess. This looks like a lot more than six marks. But it's better you have more than this. It's better you have more than this. They clearly want you to represent these six things. So they want to have this, this, this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Did we represent each one of them? Each patient has an ID number. 
Well, it's not an ERD diagram, so you don't have to put the ID number like an entity in an ERD diagram. The data is stored inside there. Cool. The nurse enters the patient data. Yeah. It's calculated. Yeah. All right, cool. A record is to be added to the patient table. Write an SQL statement to add data to for patient John Boros Boros. Whose ID number is that? She took a CAT scan on March 18th and the test result was normal. All right. This looks like an insert into. Insert into. Um, what's the name of the table? Did they give a name for the table? Nope. So you put insert into patient data. Um, patient underscore data, but that's probably the body table. Um, what else, boy? Yeah, basically, you want to put insert into whatever the name of the table is, and then you have to put the um the field that you want to update. So we we'll open up our brackets here, and we need to update. First name, surname, ID. Um, type of test. Oh no, we just have ID number, name, type of test. Okay, so so we don't have first name and surname. Everything is one. So we have ID number, um, name, type underscore of underscore test jeez this hit in mind date and cost of tests then we have date they have cost of tests do they have result of tests nope oh id number name date of tests type of tests Test result of date. They have it there. Date of test. Type of test. Type of test before date of test? No. Date of test is first time type of test. I find these names so long. I hate these long names in database, especially when they're coding. Variable names must be short. Date of test. Type of test. Comma, result of test. All right, I think that's it. There. Yes, result. I don't think that's result. Right. Once you put those things in um, brackets, your next up insert into patient data. You put the field names, and then you have to put values. And you do the same thing in the brackets. And just remember, there's a semicolon at the end because it's SQL. It's well, it's kind of like code. It's not code, code, but it's close enough to. Cool. All right, so we put it in ID number as 8502300045. Name is Joan Burrows. Next is date of test of the 3rd of January, February, March. 3rd of the 3rd. 2022 and then we have type of test which is a cat scan and the test was normal close that semicolon yeah that's the answer there why because they wanted it there's three marks where the three marks coming in I guess one mark for knowing you have to use insert into, and then the next two marks would be um, listen out all the fields and then put it in the, the uh, information. Yeah, pretty much. A manager of a manufacturing plant designs and uses relational databases to monitor the usage of machines by operators. The manufacturing plant is divided into sections, which each section is responsible for a machine. 
and there are five to 15 operations in each section. Describe fully the relationship that exists between the machine and operator. Describe fully, and two marks, uh, not exactly a straightforward answer because they have all of these lines and you're working for two marks. So what are the two things that they need for you to understand the two marks to get, to get the answer? Um, let's see. Machines and operators. The manufacturing among the sections with each section being responsible for one machine. There are five to 15 operators in each section. We want just machine and operator. One machine has one or many, one or many operators. What else I'm gonna tell you? There are 15 operators in each section and they're all responsible for one machine. So one machine has one or many operators. I don't know what else I could write. I don't know what other like, you know, words should be necessary. When they say describe fully, at least I put in one or many. Cause if they say one machine has many operators, um, that would be one mark. But if they say one machine has one or many operators, that means at least one person has to operate the machine. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I'll take that. Draw a -R -D diagram for the manufacturing plants. Yeah, this is what I was looking for. All right. So we have a uh, section. Each section is responsible for one machine. And yes, each section is responsible for after part diamond in between here. Each section responsible for one machine. one to one so you have one and one and only one right the so section one section is responsible for one and only one machine one machine is operated on by and then one machine is operated by many what's he will by operators but we put one or many operators the little the little dash there will mean that at least one person has to do it or many but this little line here means only one machine operated by many operators and this one here is one and only one for the machine the two dashes means one and only one I mean, there's only four marks, and I probably went over with the cardinalities with the relationships, but why not? Like, make sure you get your four marks. All right, so that is module one. I still kind of iffy about the amount of lines that they give it to fully describe this relationship, but uh, not too sure what else they would have wanted. If you probably have a different, longer answer that would get the two marks. Yeah, could let me know in the comments, but I'm not 100% sure what is on, what is going on there. So, alright, so next video should be module 2.